Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Why don't we welcome Bishop Daniel Lizarraga as he comes to preach the Word of God this afternoon. Isn't he wonderful? Uh, isn't he wonderful? Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. If you need peace tonight, yeah. he's here. I know you felt the more because his train has filled the temple. I feel it. I've got the chills and it's not cold in here. I'm like... You know, why doesn't someone just get back to where you're supposed to be in God? I feel the Lord just telling me to tell someone, just get back to where you're supposed to be. You know your place. You know what you ought to do. Maybe this service will be what it takes. I believe Jesus is coming very soon. <clears throat> Matthew 12. Thirty-eight. Matthew twelve, verse thirty-eight. <clears throat> then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, "Master, we would see a sign from thee." But he answered and said unto them. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Verse 41. It's where we should pay attention. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold a greater than Jonas is here the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here from the book of Acts chapter number chapter number one verse 23 and they appointed to Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, thou knowest the hearts of all men. Show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and a lot fell upon Matthias. In chapter 2, verse one. And, when the, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Lord, tonight I'm asking that you would give me the strength. Lord, I feel the breath of God upon my life right now. Lord, I feel the breath of God upon your children right now. Help me, Lord God, to flow and to be led of it speak to my spirit speak to their hearts open our understanding and help us to be enriched by your presence and by your word show your will i pray in jesus name everyone said amen turn to someone and say i want to hear about the church is it going to entitle this tonight the church 
in the text that we read concerning Jesus rebuking the Pharisees. We're always familiar. The portion that stands out to us is that uh, the sign of Jonah and Jonah being in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. And we overlook the portion that is actually the subject of the matter. It tells us that the men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold the greater than Jonas is here. Then it speaks about another individual that the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here. And may I tell you something today that there is someone that is greater than you can imagine in this place today. And I know that that's why you're here. But there might be some here that might not understand or grasp the gravity of the situation and who it is that is paying us a visit here today. And who it is that has made the difference in every person that has truly turned their heart to God. Now may I recommend or, or may I present to you that it is Jesus himself that is here. And he is flowing through up and down these aisles and through the pews. And he wants to leave a mark and he wants to impress upon your spirit that you are in the right place. Uh, a place called the church of the living God. There are a number of things that the Lord spoke to me uh, this morning. And whether I can put it into words, I'm not quite so sure. But I have rejoiced and I have been blessed. And I have been uh, uh, enjoying hearing from the Lord. For there is none like him. The scripture said in the book of Acts, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of his disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. Now, Peter, we know this, is what was called given the authority to set the church in motion. He preached in the book of Acts, chapter number uh, 2, and he preached in chapter 10 to the Gentiles, the most two important portions. I believe also chapter 8 to the Samaritans. He is the one that opened the door so that the church might be established in the earth. So when we read this, we make, we have, we make a, a wonderful, I, I made a wonderful, I received a wonderful revelation. This is part isn't it, but this is going to lead to it. The Bible tells us, we know that there were 120 in the upper room. Now, the church, the Lord has sent us through his word a signal. He has given us signs. He has given us numbers. He has given us inspiration. He has breathed on us to uh, open our understanding. He has told us to receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, and through opening this book uh, and looking at it and reading and prayerfully considering what it says to our hearts, it leads us, uh, the goodness of God leads us unto repentance. Amen. You can't draw close to the Lord without understanding the church. Amen. Can't do it. You can't do it by watching it on channel 33 or whatever channel it's on 21. Uh, you can't watch the religious channels and really get it. Uh, you might get some understanding, but you're not going to find salvation there. It might send you to a place uh, and you might get in a, a, a leading, but when it comes to the church, you're going to have to deal with people that have a witness. Amen. You will. You can't do it on your own. In fact, some of you are here today because you feel the witness here, but you don't have the witness in you. You have come to the church. 
You've come to place, uh, you've come to have a need met in your life. But it's not until you actually, you actually get that revelation where you will be able to stand up and have, uh, uh, and be able to condemn sin simply where you're at. You see, the church began with what is called 12 apostles. There was one missing till they had to take a vote. Or they had to take lots. Then what the vote, they actually cast lots, uh, and the name of Matthias came up. That was so necessary because 12 is a governmental number in the Bible. It is, it is, it, it is a number that signals this is where the government is. And so then the Bible tells us that, it also tells us that there were 120 individuals, which is, uh, which is 12 times 10 is magnified and the number 120 comes up. And so throughout the Bible, we realize then that this number is tied to the church. The number 120 is important because it will give you a revelation. I will share with you a, a, a revelation today concerning why the church is written in such a way. You might have read over those things over and over. It doesn't mean a thing to you. That's why I'm here. Amen. How can I understand what man said except a man lead me? You are in the right place. It's called the church. You are, you are experiencing what, what God always deemed necessary for us to experience. Individuals passing from death to life. From darkness to light. And it is a, it is a wonderful place. It is a place that has all sorts of feelings involved because when the flesh comes into the presence of God, they don't get along. So when you come to the, to the house of the Lord, there's doubt that comes in. That's a war you have to fight. That's a battle you have to, you have to get used to. The Bible says when he was resurrected, some believed of the 12. Some believed and some doubted in the same room. You're talking about the 12. Some believed and some doubted. Well, can I tell you this? It's time for you that doubters to step in to the glory room. To push yourself like you've never had before to catch up where you've been lagging behind. To decide that the fear of the Lord is going to rule your life and is going to, is going to guide your steps once you leave this place. And that you are going to grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And your life is going to be transformed. And you're going to, without knowing you're going to belong, you're going to find a fit into the church. You're going to find your place in the church. You don't want to find it outside. Uh, the Bible tells us that Judas hung himself uh, and went to his place outside the church. But you want to go from the outside, uh, and you want to get into the church. You want to be one that through your life shines the light on this evil generation. Jesus looked and saw the Pharisees who were the religious leaders. And he mentioned to them concerning the sign, they sought a sign. But the important portion was that, you know, he said, there's going to come a generation that's going to condemn you all. He said, they're going to come and they're going to rise up in judgment because when they heard the preaching, they repented. And you heard it and you won't repent. And then he said, there's a woman, the queen of the south, which is the queen of Sheba. And he said, and there was a woman that came and she heard the, she wanted to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And she heard it. And behold, a greater one. She's going to rise up in judgment because a greater one than Solomon is here. Now, what is so unique? This morning as I was looking at that verse of scripture, the Lord spoke to my heart. And he started showing me a few things. 
Number one, he was showing me that these individuals were all Gentiles. The individuals on Nineveh were not Jews. The queen of Sheba was not a Jew. And she would look, he was looking at the Pharisees. This is what really cut to the quick when it came to looking at them. They knew who they were talking about. He said, the, the, the ones that don't even know about God are going to rise up in judgment on the judgment day and point their finger at you. He looked and said, and the queen of Sheba, which wasn't a Jewess either. She wasn't of the nation of Israel either. And she said, you're going to be condemned because she went a long way to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And a greater than Solomon is here. And you won't even listen. Here you were individuals that were so far from God when it came to the, to the commonwealth and the inheritance of knowing who God was. And one of them received a word from afar off and one of them came from afar off to hear a word. I don't know what group you belong to today. Today. I don't know if you've come a long way or if the long way has come to you. But I'm here to express to you that if the Lord quickens your heart, run to him. If there's any wisdom to be shared, uh, bend your ear to hear it. We are living in a time where you have to be inside of what is called the church. You have to be on the inside, and when you're on the inside, huh, it's going to make a difference to those that are on the outside. Your spirit is going to be different. You have that spirit of God in you uh, that will convict, if not condemn, uh, those uh, that know him not. Here you have two individuals that the Lord speaks to us about. It spoke to my heart in a powerful way today. Because when I looked at this, I don't know, I tell you, there's something about me when I, when I don't think about things, things seem to happen in my spirit. When I go about, I'll study, I'll read, and I'll do what I need to do, and then I'll start walking around and helping my wife do things, and my boys laugh because sometimes I go to Costco before church and I do things that I don't recommend when it comes to shopping before church. But there's a little motor, something that runs in my spirit that I, don't, I hardly can pay attention to anything around me because my mind is going. I just got to get out of the house, I guess. I got to do something, get alone in the car. There might be a hundred people in the aisles, but I'm alone. I feel it. And today I, I, I was helping my wife do a few other things, and then the, I felt the Lord point something out to me, and I had to go see if it was so. And so I went to the book of, I went to the book of uh, Kings, the Queen of Sheba. And I, I had already read the scripture, Scripture early, and I look. I went to the chapter number 10, and when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. So I looked at that, and I said, you know, Lord, there's something here you're trying to tell me, and then it struck me. This verse came to me. Verse number 10, I believe it was. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold. Now, what I told you earlier, the number 120 means has a stamp of the church. So this one had the stamp of the church. But what made it so interesting is, is that the Queen of Sheba, when it spoke about rising up in judgment, somebody that's not a Jew was going to rise up in judgment, and then the Lord had already put the number 120 there, then we should look for the church. And this is what the church should be doing. Seeking out the wisdom. Seeking out the wisdom. 
of the king. I don't care how far you have to travel to seek out the wisdom of the king, to bring a gift when you go to travel to visit the king and bring him a gift to the service of the king. She was a queen. And she traveled, the Bible says, from the uttermost part of the earth. And she came because she had heard the wisdom of Saul. Why some of you are here today is because you heard that Jesus changes lives. That Jesus makes the difference. That Jesus, amen, has the answer. Why? Because he is the answer. I said he is the answer. If you really need something, get Jesus first. Don't worry. The answer is in him. Get Jesus first uh, and the answer will unfold. Get Jesus first. And so the Bible tells us she came to prove him with questions. And the Bible says she looked at all. Nothing with was withheld from her. That she came, it says, and Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. Yeah. This is such a powerful thought because these two individuals, why did the Lord why did the Lord sit there and look at them and said, well, these two Gentiles or these two groups of Gentiles, one of them is a group and one is a single person. They're going to condemn the Jewish Pharisees. Those that, those that pretend to have a walk but are simply whitened tombstones. There's a lot of religious people that have dead bones on the inside. They look churchy, but they condemn nothing when it comes to just being around people. You gotta get that in your spirit. There's a lot of people that will point a finger. I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the way that you act and live and speak uh, and people don't know what in the world is different about you because they get a little uncomfortable because they swear around you but you don't swear they laugh at bad stuff but you don't laugh uh, you go you don't go places where they go uh, and there's something in you uh, that just is different you have proved jesus uh, with questions uh, you have come to ask him uh, how to live uh, you have uh, everything you don't understand life uh, but when you come next to life uh, when you come next to jesus uh, something starts to happen in their life in your life it is necessary for you to have a walk with god And here, you find it with the Queen of Sheba. She is like mesmerized. I, in my day, I still get mesmerized by his word. Now why is it, how is it that Jesus can put things here, his spirit, the word, he, he can have the word pan through the Holy Ghost for us. Uh, and here are two individuals. What do they have in common, Lord? What, what is it? Well, Number one, they're going to set, uh, uh, they're going to stand in judgment for two different reasons. One of them because they desire wisdom. The Pharisees were the most learned ones, but they didn't desire the true wisdom. They like to, they like to get in the, you know, in the open places and, and sort of joust with questions with one another. You know, to tell, show each other how smart they were. Or here was all the wisdom of God embodied in a man, and they didn't even ask the right questions. Listen, when you come to church, ask the right questions. Don't come asking about how to dress, and don't come asking of what you do here. Come, I, is Jesus in this place? I would see Jesus. 
Don't come here wondering what we believe outside of the salvation of Acts 2.38 and being filled with the Holy Ghost and living a holy life. We're not here to make controversy, but we want to be next to you. And when you feel convicted and when you feel or condemned, it's because of someone that lives in us. It ought to be in every one of you. You ought to be somehow turned inside out, right side up when you come into the presence of the Lord and have enough in you when somebody has to ask a question. Where have you been or where do you go to church? Adonde vas a la iglesia? Where do you go to church? Whichever it is. Go to church. There ought to be something in us that we learned how to repent. What was the difference? They heard it and they repented. We're living in an atmosphere in a world where there is church without repentance. Did you hear that? We're living in a world where there's supposedly, it's all churchy, but there's no repentance. You say, well, what is holiness? I'll tell you what it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's, e that's the easier way to do it. Forget about the holiness. Well, let's, let's talk about what it's not. That way, his holiness is, is so deep and profound because God is coming into us. That's where holiness, that's where serving God is all about. Yeah, and you know, then people start to play with, well, you, 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 well that, that's not, we're old school. You're new school. This is the way we teach it here. That's the way it used to be. That's a bunch of nonsense. You know what you feel in a person that carrying the Lord is on the inside? That's holiness. You're not going to find it in a drugged up, drunken, derelict, lying in a gutter. Oh, well, God forgives everything. That ain't holy. Not that what well, ain't holiness. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what you have to have on the inside. The Holy Ghost. The, the Holy Spirit. I'm old school. Holy Ghost. I don't know why. That's just me. I don't mean nothing by it. Don't get offended. You know? I like Holy Ghost, the spirit of the departed one who came back. Mm, the church. Now notice. <clears throat> I feel bad for you because I felt terrible before I preached. But I'm feeling better now. So I feel... I feel better now, so... Let's go on just a little bit further. The, he said, this generation is going to condemn you. It's too bad, you know, that they couldn't stand up then and do it because in the judgment, it's too late. It's too late. But these individuals, they repented. They, they found the secret of success in serving God. Something that Paul spoke about, I die daily. Every day you ought to die to something. If it's not for nothing else, at least one thought that constantly plagues you. Somehow conquer it. Casting down imagination. It's like stray cats. Thoughts are like stray cats. You cast them away on their back. That's the way thoughts are. You cast them down. <laughs> After a while, they get the message. They don't come back. But you have to cast imaginations. You have to fight. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to put away evil jesting. You have to do all these things. Yeah, you might have got rid of the big things, but the Lord leaves all the little things for you to get rid of. Yeah, he can get rid of drinking, alcoholism in a moment's time, drug addiction. But he'll leave you a lot of small stuff to work on. And just because you got rid of it, he helped you with the big stuff. Doesn't mean you got to get to keep all the little stuff. Well, the Lord didn't take it away like he did my addiction. Oh, he's leaving that up to you. 
He's leaving that bad attitude to you. Yeah. He, he, he's leaving all that, you know, all those little, other little excesses to you. Now, the Lord didn't want this or that. Well, listen, he's leaving a lot of work to you. You got to fix up this old house. You have to turn it around. You have to make it look so nice that your neighbor's house looks terrible. You can't be the house that makes the other house say, I wish they'd move. No, you got to be that house. Yeah, like next door to your house. Yeah. That's the good house. There you go. I just passed by and saw that the other day. How they say it? Good for you. Amen. Well, it's important. To be able to have conviction. Oh, that's just your conviction. No, what you're feeling, that conviction, what you're feeling is Holy Ghost in me. It's not just my thoughts. I've been sitting with the wisest one that ever lived. And when you start to take time to sit at the master's feet, People are going to know that you walked with Jesus. People have to feel that you walked with Jesus. It's better to have them be condemned now, convicted now, than condemned down the road. It's better for you and your spirit to have them ask questions that were too late in the judgment. Now notice what happened. When you look at this, it's a picture of the church, of all, everything that he will do, everything that he will show, everything that he will, he will impart to you, as he did uh, to the Queen of Sheba. But what's so wonderful about it, when you read about it, it tells us that the Lord gave her, the Sheba, all her desire, whatsoever she asked, that Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. Jesus does the same for us. Whatsoever he asked, he said he will do it. Listen, once you get your mind right and you've been with Jesus, you'll start asking the right asks. You'll know what to ask for. You won't be asking like all sorts of things, you know. You won't be asking for Mercedes Benz when you still live in a little shack. When you get your mind right, you're going to get the car you need. But you'll get what you need. If it's not a car, you'll get the bike you need. And if you're not at bike level, you'll get a skateboard that you need. Whatever it is, he will give you what you need. Maybe not what you want, but he'll give you what you need. Whatsoever you ask in my name, he said, I will do it. The Queen of Sheba is a picture of the church. It says she brought him 120 talents of gold. Therefore, we know that's the church that has their faith tried as by fire. Our faith is like gold tried by fire. It is being perfected through every problem that you have, every single problem that you have, endure it. He will not give you more than you are able. Endure it. You're lonely, endure it. You're sick, endure it. Being tempted, endure it. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For you're going to receive a crown of life. Endure it. It is perfecting your faith. It is the gold that Sheba had. It is what she came. And this is what I have. She gave him the gold. This is my faith. Or what do we give him? We give him our faith that is tried in the fire. That's what the Lord looks at. That's why. You and I are going to stand in the judgment with the Lord and is going to condemn a lot of other people as to what they could have done. Yeah. Yeah. We were raised in this thing. I lived for 20 some odd years about 100 yards from an apostolic church and I never knew what was in there. I walked about by it a jillion times would stop when they were having church and I tried to look through the double doors. But the doors were never open. When the one were open, the other ones were closed. 
Me and a brother one time, I don't know what got into us, but we would hear the men there. What are they doing? There? I don't know, man. They're crazy. We, we would run. We ran over there all sneaking and threw ourselves underneath the coolers. And no, we're working. We look in there. Couldn't look in there. It wasn't until I was 21 years of old, 21 years of age, that I ended up getting baptized there. The first. <laughs> and then I realized all this, all this, all the answers, all the way of life, everything that God has is locked up in that shabby little building over there. Believe me, you wouldn't go to that church the way it looked. The only reason I went there is because my wife, before she said my wife went there. That's wisdom. Yeah. So you, when you come to the house of the Lord, church, Lord, to the house of the Lord, you learn, you come for wisdom. You've already been baptized. Uh, you've already been filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, come and listen. Get a hunger for wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given. If your life is just out there right now, and you don't know really where you're going to end up, listen, stay in the church. Find yourself your local church, whatever it is you need. It doesn't have to be this one, but it has to be one with the imprint of the 120 that were originally baptized in Jesus' name. Find yourself a place with the wise. I said, find yourself a place with the wise. Then the Bible tells us, look it up how beautiful this is. If you read, I believe it is the 14th verse. There's a chain. Excuse me. Wait. It says, uh, so she turned and went, verse 13, and went to her own country, she and her servants. And then the church is gone. The Sheba is gone. And then this verse of scripture comes up. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six 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 so after she left when you read the story of solomon he is like the antichrist from that portion on his heart is turned he becomes idolatrous he becomes a, a wicked man he starts to learn the, the evils of, he puts the idols of his wives inside the temple. He defiles the temple that had been so beautiful that he had erected. And he made it, filled it with idols. So from that time, 666 appears. Now what does that tell us? It tells us this. That the church will not be here when the Antichrist comes. That... The church will have already returned back to where she, where she really belongs. And then, before the evil comes, they're in Jerusalem. They said, Jesus was in Jerusalem. The Antichrist is going to be in Jerusalem. All there is is a transition. He learns to love his gold. He learns to love his things, his houses, his women, his idols, his magic, his evil. Solomon becomes a very evil man. The Lord is disappointed with him. So from that verse on, 666, six, six, his character changes. What is the wisdom for the church? Listen, if you're in the church, you got to be thankful that here's something around the horizon. You got to be thankful because, do you know they're already chipping people? They're already chipping them, getting them ready. It's practice around. They're doing it. Companies are doing it. They say, why are you doing this? They said, so that they can have access to the company. Forget it. They got to say, forget it. To have access, I'll take a key. <laughs> yeah. How dumb is that to have access? My goodness. So it's telling us, it's giving us wisdom today. Listen, whether you think you're going to go through tribulation, you know, I don't want to stop you. <laughs> but... I will warn you, because it ain't going to have, the Lord, this, let's just go on. Can I tell you? This is why the two numbers, 120 
is a few verses up in 10, and then you have in 14, there's another verse. You and I know the number 666, that the man that has wisdom calculate the number of the beast. Because he turns into an antichrist. Therefore, the kingdom after him is destroyed. I heard that in my spirit this morning. I just saw it when I read it. When I went to the Bible, I, I understood it. More confirmation. I want to tell you, if this is so, you better be ready now. You better get ready now. Then we have, I'm already got, then we have Jonah. Real quick on Jonah. Jonah, he, he preaches. He, he goes out. You know, what, you know the whole story. We're not going to go over it, but simply said that. Uh, he goes and he preaches to the Ninevites. They saw him. Why did they repent? Because somebody saw him. The Bible tells us when he went down to the bottom of the ocean, to the depth, to the, bottom, to the belly of hell, he went down. It says that the weeds were wrapped around him. That means that fish had a lot of seaweed. It had eaten a lot of stuff. He was all messed up. He, but he cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard his cry. Doesn't matter how... Far you think you've gone from God, uh, realize it. Cry out to God from the belly of hell, and God will hear your cry. He is the sign. He is a symbol. Why did they believe him? Because they must have seen the fish. Come on up. Talk about an uber fish. Uh, that thing showed up, uh, spit him out. Uh, that thing, he, was, he must have been, the Bible said he had weeds wrapped all around him in the previous verses. He must have come out looking like vomit. But the thing was, he was alive. Nobody had ever seen anything like this. He was a sign. There he's headed for Nineveh. Hey, there's people saying, oh, you, listen. I don't know what this boy is going to say, but listen, you better listen to him. For he came, from, he came from, the, from a fish. It's miraculous. This man was, should have been dead, but it's alive. He, somehow, he's breathing. He came out, you know, whales live in the deep. This thing brought him up, shipped him here. And so we better listen. 40 days and it's going to happen. And the people repented. Now, the, cutting through the chase right here, it tells us. It tells us that the Lord did not destroy them because they repented. He simply repented. The power of repentance. Can I tell you, don't ever stop repenting. The church must never stop repenting. doesn't mean you backslid. It tells you why. Well, you might have, but if you backslid, repent. But every day we sin, no matter what, in thought or in deed, or, or something happens in our life where we're not the, we miss the mark. It might just be a weight. I'm not talking about you fall into adultery every day. Repent. I'm talking about things happen in life. That can happen. You better learn that one time. Because after that, it becomes a habit. You're just a flat-out adulterer. But we're talking about when a person repents. Repentance, when you learn repentance, you don't do it no more. That's repentance. You stop doing stuff. After a while, you start perfecting yourself in the fear of God. You start talking to your husband right, in the right manner. Not when he walks in the door, where were you I can't hear you. <laughs> what were you looking at? I thought you were supposed to be home yesterday. Three days now. You see, you'll be back in 20 minutes. It's been an hour. 
Hey, that's common life. But we can improve in common life. We can constantly repent and say, you know, I want to be the best mate that I can for my husband or my wife. I want to be the best person that I can be in my school. I want to be the best in this church when it comes to hospitality. I want to do something different. I want to repent of who I am. I want to hide my life in Jesus. Instead of seeing me, the old me, I want them to see something else. What happened to him? Who does he think he is? He goes to the altar now. Well, let him go. Quit pointing the finger. Just do it. He's changed. He's repented. That's what it takes in serving God. I die daily. Ladies, repent. Let your skirts get a little bit longer. I'll amen that. Amen, Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. For, at least for church. Start a church. You say, Bishop, don't. Yes, yes, yes. I believe in, in, in having to tell you sometimes, listen, it's modesty. That's what repentance is. It is modesty. Before that, we weren't modest. Before I was in church, I didn't like my wife modest. I found her that way. She came to church and I said, is that my wife right there? Yeah, she's about four inches shorter. Which was great for me because she, didn't, she didn't feel like a threat anymore. I mean, we, we used to see eye to eye. <laughs> she knows I'm messing with her. But it's, yeah. All these issues. Listen, I shouldn't even mention these things, but, you know, there's stuff that needs to just, I just be truthful, I just can't help it, okay? I'm telling you. I'm not afraid of you. That's my problem. Amen. So this is what we look for. We look for changing our life on a daily basis. Well, it's fantastic that you're not on drugs. It's, but don't stop there. It's fantastic that you don't swear anymore. But don't stop there. Keep going. Keep being. Keep being. Wanting to be in the image. Now here's. I'm going to close with this. Before I go into a pastor's situation. Thank you, brother. Please help me. Now his time is a little bit different. See, he's... Is that all right? It tells us this. Here's what it tells us. Give me a moment to find it. Jonah. Jonah was upset because the Lord didn't destroy Nineveh when he said he would. The Lord said, 40 days and I'm going to destroy it. 40 days. Came and he didn't do it. That's God. That's God's word. God only changes his word and he only changes his blessing for one reason only. Repentance. You want to change things around you in your relationship with God? Repentance. Even Ahab, after the, the most evil king that ever lived, was handpicked by Jezebel. He was messed up in his life. His wife killed a man that gave him a garden for him to uh, enjoy because he didn't want, he, he was crying because he couldn't have that garden. And his wife said, quit crying here. Who, aren't you the king? Had the man killed, sent Ahab, guess what? It's yours. Ahab goes down, he's all happy in his garden, and guess who he finds there? The prophet. He meets the prophet. <laughs> Listen, this is why sometimes you run into me different places, all right? 
Who do I see at the top of the little head going through the store? <laughs> wasn't, wasn't that? My wife, leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. Here's Ahab. He's, you going to go claim his garden? All right. And there's, the Lord says, Elijah, go to the garden over there. Got, you got an appointment to keep. Sure enough, here comes the king, sees the prophet. Enemy of Israel. He calls the prophet the enemy. What are you doing here, oh, my enemy? Could be anything called friend. He couldn't. He said, you, trouble, you always troubled Israel. And probably, no, you're the one that's troubling Israel. You know what you've done. That's why you're, you're all messed, your whole kingdom's falling apart. He said, you're going to die soon. He says, it's going to happen to you. He tells them what's going to happen to him. And Ahab, the most evil man that ever lived, goes and he weeps and he repents. And then the Lord tells the prophet, hey, prophet, he's not going to die after all. I'm going to destroy the king. Or he's not going to die immediately right now. I'm going to, he's going to die, but not right now. It's going to happen later. Haven't you seen how he's over there weeping and crying and repenting? Repentance changes the course of God in your life. That's what the church is. The church thrives on repentance. It doesn't thrive on music, and it doesn't thrive on, on personality, and it doesn't thrive, oh, hey, that's where all the famous people go. No, it doesn't thrive in that fashion. It thrives on repentance. That's where a church thrives. So that when you go there, for two or three are gathered together in a name, people feel it. Hey, that's church there. That's church there. So then it makes this statement in closing. He was angry and he was mad at God. And God said to Jonah, does thou do well to be angry with the, for the Lord? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Then said the Lord, Thou hast pity on the gourd, for which thou hast no, not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. And should not I spare Nineveh, the great city wherein there are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? What is what he's saying here? He's saying there are 120,000 people that have repented. There's 120 at least. That's the number of the church. That, that tells you this is the proper interpretation. This is why these individuals are going to stand in judgment. Because the there's 120,000 of them, he said, that they don't know the right from their left. They don't know right from wrong. They've only had a preacher barely to repent. And they repented. Even the cattle repented. Don't feed them for all these days. Yeah. So, Lesson number two. The Lord again, the Queen of Sheba, the Antichrist. The men that repented and destruction. The Lord will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. He said, I can't destroy it now. Somebody repented. And 
there's a certain number of them that they repented. That's to let us know. That's the way the church is. You know why the tribulation has not started yet? Because you and I are here. We're still here. And it's not till we're taken out of here that destruction is going to come. So if you stand with me tonight, I want to share with you one secret. Repentance is the need of the hour. Repentance is the attitude that we, we come to face face to face with a holy God that we're going to do better that when we went to church and we felt something that I've got to do better because I know that he's real and that he's alive and that he I am here because he called me to come when you get it down in your spirit your life is going to transform it's going to change. What were you doing different? Well, you worked harder at one thing. Repentance. Your thought patterns. You stopped thinking evil about me. Repentance. Everything around you is going to seem brighter. You're going to want to live. You're not going to be bored with your life. You're not going to want excitements that, that are no avail because there's going to be a satisfaction in your life. I want to open this platform. I want to thank you for your patience. I was sick. I'm feeling much better. I want to thank you for whispering a prayer for me. I want you to come. Open your spirit to the Lord. The church, the church runs on repentance. Quit seeking gifts without repentance. Quit seeking blessings without repentance. Stop seeking answers without repentance. It's a way of life. It's a way of being. Stir it up within you.
Seek the wisdom. Seek the wisdom. Yes. 